eight items essential to survival. Hey everybody, this is Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness. Survival kits, a lot of people talk about them. What people don't understand is coming up with a list like this is very difficult. And it doesn't apply to everybody because everybody's in different AOs, area of operations, where you live. Some people live in the desert, some people live in the swamps, some people live in the forest, some people live in the mountains, etc. And time of year matters. Winter, summer, what do you need? Also, big time, what matters? Your skill set. Uh, what's up here? What knowledge level do you have? What skills do you have to go out into nature, to go out into there and survive? So different people need different things. It is very important to understand the difference. The skills I have to survive in that are different than the skills you have. I mean, even if you're even if we're both master or bushcraft survivalists, the skill sets are still different. Our knowledge is different, our experiences are different, our ability to deal with a dynamic situation is different. Everybody's different. So you can't just say, here is a survival kit um, and end all be all, because it doesn't necessarily apply. I want or I want certain things out in there that maybe you don't need. And maybe there's some things you need that I can get away without. I go bare minimum. That's why I said eight things. With these eight things, I could do fairly well surviving out in the middle of nowhere. Um, would it be optimal? No. Would I have everything I need? No. But these items, I feel, are key, are definitely essential. I would want at least these eight items on me, with me, if I'm going to go out and try to survive. So, what's number one? Well, what's the number one thing? Shelter right? And this depends on where you live. Again, a tarp. I take a tarp with me because I can make do with the tarp. I can roll up in it. I can um, just, just hang it up. I can do lots of different things with a tarp. I can lay it out and collect rainwater. There's a lot of different things. Tarp is very, very useful. So tarp makes my list. And then you have to have the ability to string it up, right? So 550 cord. Why 550 cord? There's a lot of other cordage out there, but because you can take the strands out of the center, you can use those, uh, the smaller strands for a lot of different things. So basically you have seven strands in there and the outer sheath. So you have eight things of cordage. So if you take 50 feet with you, you have eight times 50 feet, which is pretty good. So shelter is key. We all know that exposure and, but exposure happens, right? But it also depends on where you are. If you are in, you know, Florida, you may not need the same shelter as somebody in Michigan does, right? And depends on the time of year. So, but shelter is important. What's next on the list? What's the next most important thing? We got a drink, right? So for me, water purification, a way to filter or purify water. But here again, I have water sources all around me. So I don't necessarily have to have a bunch of water on me because where I am, I can always find water fairly easily here in the Pacific Northwest. If you're in Arizona, maybe different. You may want to take water with you, but also a way to filter it because you're going to run out eventually anyway. So you got to have a way to uh, filter, uh, treat, purify, <laughs> that's the word, water. Okay. What's another thing? If you're going to go out and survive in the, in the wilds, what do you, you have to know where you're going, right? So you need a map and compass. That's another item. And these aren't in any particular order. So, yeah, I'm just throwing them out. Map and compass. You've got to, and the knowledge to use it. Obviously, these things go along with knowledge. If you don't have the knowledge, use a map and compass, then why would you take it with you? It's just going to be a waste of, of ounces and pounds. Ounces equal pounds, pounds equal pain. When you're carrying stuff out in the woods, long periods of time, backpackers, military people, boots on the ground type people, they know that. So you've got to limit that. Along with that, boots on the ground type people, backpackers, hikers, you know, big game hunting guides, they all know people that spend a lot of time outside, bushcrafters, survivalists. What's another very important part you got to take care of? Your feet, right? Because you're going to be out on your feet. So quality footwear. And what goes along with that? Socks, quality socks. I like merino wool socks, 70% merino wool or greater um, because it keeps, you, it keeps you warm, whether it's wet or dry and it dries out fairly quickly, and merino wool isn't itchy like regular wool. So that's why merino wool socks. 
you got to take care of your feet. Some people throw foot powder on the list. Well, I'm trying to pare it down to the bare minimum. Um, and with socks, extra pairs. Extra pairs of socks are vital because uh, you got to keep your feet dry. Um, and depending on the wall and the environment, whether that quality footwear means Gore-Tex or waterproof or something like that footwear, or if you want footwear that um, drains quickly, dries out quickly, depends. Lots of things depend. Um, a knife. You got to have a knife. <laughs> Hands down. Any survival situation, you have to have a knife. Fixed blade and a folder. I would say two knives. But you can do most things with a good quality fixed blade. I would say, you know, not a big, huge Rambo knife, but, you know, a decent quality survival bushcraft fighting knife type thing that will perform many different roles. You want multi-use items. So a good quality knife. Um, maybe a Leatherman, Gerber, you know, a multi-tool, something like that. may be your knife, but it'd be better to have some kind of fixed blade because you can do hacking with it. You can do a lot of different things, building with it, stuff like that. Um, what's another very important thing? If you're out there, what are the odds of getting injured? High, right? So you need a med kit. And I'm talking a combination, maybe IFAC slash boo-boo kit. A medical kit that has stuff that will help you treat minor injuries and major injuries. Uh, I'm not talking a big, huge trauma bag. Uh, I'm talking just a bare bones med kit, which you feel and has the items that you know how to use in it. Do you know how to use a tourniquet? Then have one. If you don't, then what's the point? Learn though, that's the point. Um, so medical kit is very important. What other items should you have in there? Gauze, um, quick clot, maybe things like that. Um, Boo-boo, you know, band-aids, antiseptic, uh, maybe some alcohol, alcohol wipe pads, some gloves, you know, there's a lot of different things. It all depends on what you need. Chest seals. If you're in also, if you are, you know, high threat environment or you're in a low threat environment, are you, is there a threat of you getting SHOT or not? So, hey, you got to plan for these things. It's like I said, this is all, these are just ideas. And these are things that I would take with me based on my skill sets, my area, my location, stuff like that. So what's another thing? Well, we got shelter, we got water, food, right? You got to have food. So rations, and now I'll throw in some honorable mentions here also. So rations, what are rations? Rations are food that's ready to eat. Canned goods, although they're heavy. Ration bars, MREs, stripped down MREs. You don't have to have hot food, right? So you don't need those heaters. You don't need all those spice packets. You don't need all the, all the accoutrements and stuff like that. Strip it down to what you need, the calories you need. Uh, maybe a packet of peanut butter, whatever, whatever you like, whatever, you know, however you work your rations, you need to have rations for, you know, about what, three days, maybe a week, depending on what your situation is, what you're planning for and how you're setting this up. But rations are important. Uh, no preparation needed. Just eat it because you don't want, I'm thinking you don't want to get in a, you're in a situation where you want to give away your location. That's why I didn't include any fire making materials. I didn't include that in my kit because I can survive without a fire. Um, some situations I may be in certain locations where I would definitely have fire, fire making stuff. Oh, there's a wasp right on my <laughs> camera flew away. All right. So this, yeah, these eight. Okay. So what are some honorable mentions? Um, honorable mentions would be the ability to procure food, maybe some snares that you could use because they don't take up much room. You could take some snares with you, use that fixed blade to make some snares, use some the wire to trap small game. That'll keep you sustainable. Also things are up here, like I said, knowledge. Can you go out here and forage? Do you know that that's a black huckleberry? Do you know that these are um, blackberries? Do you know that right back in there somewhere is a, is a red huckleberry? Do you know those kind of things um, to be able to survive out in SHTF? So this is just a quick list of eight things that I know I would definitely have with me. I, I would probably have more, but these eight things I think are essential and key. Water purification, or shelter, water purification, map and compass, knife, quality footwear and socks, 550 cord or whatever quality cordage you choose, a good medical kit, and rations. So you have shelter, food, water, and the ability to get more food, more water, and hopefully survive. So like I said, this is bare bones for me. May not apply to you. I'm sorry. I don't have all the answers. I cannot tell you because like I said, 
if you're in Michigan in the winter, you haven't been through survival schools, you weren't in the military, you need totally different equipment and gear than I do. You need a lot more gear. The less skill you have, the more gear you need because you're gonna need to you're gonna to need to be able to fill in the gaps of your experience. People with experience, people that know how to suck it up, suck it up buttercup, that was one of my favorite terms in the military. Make do with less, then the better off you'll be because then you won't have to carry the weight. And people in those situations that live through that kind of stuff tend to be more fit, typically. So they have the ability to carry more also, but they don't need to. That's where this comes in, in skills. So anyway, hope you guys liked the video. Please subscribe, please hit the like button, please comment below, please share the videos. Share the love with all the other Prepper channels out there. Rising tide lifts all boats. Let's lift the community. Let's empower and encourage others. Talk to people about prepping. Get more people under preparedness. It's very, very important. Tough times are coming. Let's do this thing. Prep a little every day. And remember that prepping is living insurance. I love you guys. Have a wonderful day and blessings to you and yours.